Well, good morning everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Haven't done a review in a little while, but um, I actually ended up getting a new camping fridge, a replacement, and you'll probably see it behind us here. It's the National Luna, as National Luna Legacy, the 50 litre, and it's the sort of twin bin uh, fridge freezer combination with the dual controls. Now, I've got this one to sit in the car and I thought I'd do just the initial review. I mean, it's only been a week or something. Um, but just a little bit as far as why and the build quality and things like that. There's a few videos on them, but there's not a lot on the National Lunar. So I thought I'd just do the initial thoughts of it um, and sort of why I went this way with the National Lunars. Sort of in the car, that I could use that at least had a little bit of freezer space um, and that would sort of fit in that cabinet there. What I found, you know, I like to go away while we go away. You know, if we go with the daughter, we take this for camping. Rather than having two fridges, a couple of times we've gone, we've had a dedicated fridge and then a sort of freezer sitting there, but then it takes up real estate. You sort of, two compressors running. Um, like I said, the fridge will roughly draw one, one and a half amps in the summer. The freezer, when it's set the 32 uh, angle, they'll probably draw about two, two and a bit amps and things like that. Um, so rather than take it away, like I say, it's valuable real estate. So I wanted something that you could utilize as a fridge and a little bit of freezer, or you could sort of use it as both freezer. Um, so it's got the two bins down that way. And it's got the little freezer space in there. So that space there is roughly the equivalent. Uh, well, they say it's 39 litres, and I measured them up. So if you've got a 40 litre angle, it's roughly about the same interior dimensions. And then you've got a freezer there, which is 11 litres, which might not sound enough, uh, but it's plenty in there. And I mean, if you want to use it as a total fridge, I can use that as all fridge space and that as dairy or sort of veggie crisper or something like that and you still got 50 litres. There's one above it which is a 60 litre um, but then your, your fridge space goes down from 39 litres to 35 and your freezer goes from 11 to 24 so I mean you can use them both as fridge as well. But like I said, for the occasional, we just want a little bit of freezer space, just for a couple of bits and pieces, and rug it, rather than lugging around two fridge freezers, I just had it all in the one. So, and why the National Lunar? I mean, these have got a very good reputation. They've been around forever. I mean, if you have a look at that, they're still designed and manufactured in South Africa, so they're not Chinese made. Um, the fit and finish, of these things I mean it's got the dimpled uh, what's the name I'll pull it out a little bit later because what I want to do I'm going to take that one out the ARB and I'm going to fit this one in here and I'm just going to see how it sort of works I know that obviously when you pull it out in the slide when it's got enough room to pull it out fully and do the baskets but the other good thing with the 50 see these latches here and I'll bring it around later this is the only model on the dual zones where you actually can change this around so you can see they've got blanking points here so and they give you spare blanks here so you can take two of these off you put them there you take one of these latches off put a blanking plate and there's actually got screws and everything on the other side so then it can open up when I mean, you swing it around the other way but it opens up um, frontwards, so essentially it will open up, you know, like this one here, where you can open up there and access it. I mean, once you pull it out, obviously the tilt will give it enough clearance. But I mean, I mean if I need to modify this a little bit, I can sort of always cut into it. This was just um, a little bit homemade during the, the pandemic, just enough to, you know, protect the fridge, stop things bumping up against it. And just gave us a little bit of storage space on top with every, you know without the sort of fridge being crowded and everything else but like i say if you have a look at these things the latches everything is just well made well finished off it's all flush fit it's all stainless i mean 
just the joints and everything are really good. And I mean that's the um, what's the name? It's like a commercial grade seal on it that comes up. You know, that sort of puffs down. They've got air holes, which they say obviously when I open it up, little air holes in there all the way along. They'll suck in the air, and then when you compress it down, I say this thing compresses and just seals it in really tight. I mean you can hear that come through. So I'll take it off there. I'll put it into there, I'll play around with it, I'll give you, I'll sort of just show you sort of roughly how it works with with these, only a few simple controls. Um, so you've got the low voltage cutouts, low, medium, high, and depends on what uh, voltage you want it cut out. I say with the lithium it's not really sort of too big an issue because that thing will stay at, you know, 13 volts. Uh, pretty well until about 70-80%. Uh, you got the fault light through here and then through there uh, is the turbo mode so you can sort of press that and it will just you know will make the compressor run really fast at uh, maximum efficiency and it'll bring these temperatures right down. Um, like I say that's I've set that to the freezer so what it usually does what I've noticed um, it'll probably go to about two degrees above what it set at once it starts hitting there, then the thermostat will kick in and it will start cooling it down. And it will usually bring it down to about 2 or 3 degrees under what you set it. I mean this is with the fridge empty, it will probably not vary as much once it's full because I've got nothing in here. I'm just sort of just trolling them out. I originally just wanted to play around with a bit of the amp drawer and everything else. but. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a good footprint as well. They're about, this is a 50 litre, like I said. It's roughly the footprint of, sorry about it, about a 40 litre angle. Um, a little bit wider, same, um, same height as a 40. And just a, a little bit longer. I think it's probably about 20, 30 mils longer. And I think about 20, 30 mils, two or three centimetres a little bit wider but it should sit in that cavity right quite nicely like I said I'll, I'll muck around with hinges I'll take them all off and I'll just see how it sits in there the best way of doing but um, so far so good like I said I, I looked at a 40 litre angle combi I had one of those as well that was sort of bought that second hand sold that second hand um, the only thing I didn't like about that, the evaporator was only about one third of the fridge and then you use the thermostat to cool it down. Same with the 60 litre angle. The 60 would have fit in here but it would have been snug right up again. I've only got 500 mils through there and I don't like the fact that you have to run the freezer to work the fridge. I mean, I don't think they can use as all fridge only because they've got, um, again the evaporator is only one side of the fridge and it relies on a fan taking it from the freezer into the fridge area. I don't think they're as efficient. I certainly found that with a 40 litre combi it wasn't efficient. Whereas these things, I say the cool well the cooling plates they go all the way around. Um, was one of the manufacturing videos I reckon that's sort of like copper ceiling through there and it's got like 12 meters of you know uh, copper gas lines all around the evaporator plates so you know all the way top to bottom same thing all the way top to bottom you know this lid you can feel how heavy it is and they say that's all injection molded so I mean the true test will come after a couple months use and certainly coming into summer I'm going to see how it performs over summer especially here in Australia I mean we had one of the probably hottest summers in Perth uh, with 40 odd degrees for you know weeks upon end half the time so we'll see we'll see how it performs in those conditions especially in the back of a car as well I do have the um, what's the name the solar screens on there and they I tell you what if you ever get them for one of your cars they help so much they just sort of block out the heat and the sun coming into all your stuff in the back and they give you privacy as well so alright I'll get into swapping around and all right so I've got to set it up in the back at the moment and that's it there plugged in 
don't know whether you can see figures on there but the left hand side uh, as you're looking at it which is set on the fridge level that's set on two degrees and the other one uh, which is the freezer section I've got that one set on four degrees and you can hear the compressors just kicked in on that one so it's fairly quiet and this will give you an idea of the amp drill so it's just under 3.4 3.3 amps it's drawing on low setting to bring it down and it's running off it's actually a national lunar battery box um, I did have the projector one I've still got the projector one and it's got 120 amp hour iTech world battery in there so if you have, actually have a look at that I've had it running now just a, a preliminary test has been sitting in the car for a day and a half so it's actually been going since 3 30 p.m. on the 4th today's the 6th um, so what's that 24 36 hours uh, 3 to 10 that's another seven so four, 43 odd hours and the amps there were actually 19 and a half when I started the testing and now it's 44 so 24 amps in in 43 hours I think that works out to be you know just over half an amp an hour which is pretty exceptional going um, the angles that I use as well I mean roughly I've gauged it on I've had that for about 15 years now about one amp an hour uh, set on fridge and probably about two two and a bit when they're set on freezer they really work when they're on freezer I had one um, it's about 40 odd one degrees and it was sitting in the back of the car and it was probably working about 90% of the time but as you can see I say that one it's drawing about 3.11 when I first had it set up they were both both cabinets were sitting on 22 degrees and they pull down to I say 2 degrees and 40 degrees within about 20 minutes but it was using on the well I think it kicks into turbo mode it was using about 6 amps to bring it down um, but like I said it it brought it down in in 20 minutes and that fridge was down to temperature so yeah so that's it there I'm just sort of taking it out now have a look you've got um, I'll say you two catches along there. You've got the control panel down through that way. And then there's your fuse, uh, your 240 in, and your 12 volt as well. So, that said, two bins. Comes with um, two baskets. The one and the two. Pull it out. So that's it there. You got LED light as well, which turns on when you open it up. Uh, the insulation, I think they say, is about 42 mil. So and that's the 30. Nine litre side near the fridge or freezer, and this is again fridge or freezer 11 litres. So, I well, say so that's probably uh, well for me, maybe for others not enough, but for a weekend away or something like that, frozen berries, a bit of ice cream, icy poles, frozen veg whichever one so that sort of sits in there and it's got a little recess around on the lid and again it could have gone to something you know like a 70 75 twin lids I mean next model up on this one still single but goes 60 as I mentioned before but um, another 400 bucks like I said this is roughly equivalent to 1400 dollars this is roughly equivalent to you know what you're paying for a 
an angle or stuff like that. Uh, obviously a little bit more expensive than the Wacos. You probably, you might have remembered, I did do that review a little while ago. And um, that was on a 35 litre uh, CFX3. Now that thing got returned. Um, it kept throwing up error messages coming up red. Um, problem with the compressor or something like that. Default code 33. And if you look at it, apparently it's quite common in the new CFX3s. So I, don't, I don't know what they've done with the compressor or something on that model. Um, but they seem to be throwing up faults on that one. So that one, it was bought from BCF, went back to BCF and uh, got my money back on that one. If you actually have a look at, I think it's the American website, the CFX3s on the third edition. There was a recall on some of them. It was something with a 240 and 12 volt. Um, you couldn't have them both plugged in at once because they've got auto switching. You know, most of these ones got auto switching. So when you get on 12, plug it into 240, it takes over 240. Um, there, I don't know, you, you couldn't for some reason. You kept throwing current back into the 12 volt circuit or something. And a couple of them had issues with burning stuff out and um, I'm not sure even in a little fire or something, but I know there was a recall done in America. Nothing here in Australia, nothing else that I can find overseas or anything like that. So anyway, that's why I sort of went this route. Like I say, for my circumstance, this thing fits the bill. Um, very fortunate, you know, I play around with the fridges for a little while as well. Um, chop and change but we'll see how this one goes and I think we're finally there all right here it is all mounted up in the 200 series it's in there pretty well what I did um, end up just cutting probably about 60 70 mil from the top there because I actually like that the power's towards the back, otherwise if you swapped it around, like I said, to use these. I might do it some other time, but um, it still gives good access. I can lift that up, that actually sort of just wedges in there as well. And I've got full access to the baskets. I actually like having the fridge closer in because I can go in and sort of see what's there because this one's shallower so I can sort of lean in and see straight what's in there. I actually like having me personally the freezer up towards the back and that because if I swapped it around this would be at the front freezer would be at the back and it would just be pain trying to see sort of stuff down the bottom but um, it works nice and easy I still got, um, I still read up those. I still got easy access to the controls. I need them. Easy enough access there. There you go. Sitting there nice and square. Alright, guys, thanks very much. I'll, um, I'll see you guys for the next 6 to 12 months and we'll do a follow-up review and just to see how it's all working. Cheers guys.